Before I discuss the similarities between Hinduism and Islam, let's look at the definition of Hinduism and then of Islam. The word Hindu geographically refers to the people living beyond the river Sindhu. And it refers to the people living around the river Indus. And the historians say that this word Hindu, it was first used by the Persians to describe a group of people. The historians also say that this word Hindu, it was used to describe a group of people by the Arabs. And according to the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, volume number six, reference number 699, it's mentioned that this word Hindu, it was nowhere to be found in any Indian scripture nor in any Indian literature before the advent of Muslims to India. And according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, he writes in his book, The Discovery of India, page number 74 and 75. He says that this word Hindu, it was earliest used in the 8th century as a tantric to describe a group of people. It was not in relation with any religion, whereas its relation with any religion is of late occurrence according to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. The Hindu scholars, they say that this word Hinduism, it is a misnomer. But the right word which should be used is a Sanatan Dharma or a Vedic Dharma. And Swami Vivekananda, who's a great scholar of Hinduism, he rightly says that Hinduism, it is a misnomer. But the right word which should be used is a Vedantist. So the word Hindu, geographically it refers to the people living beyond the river Sindhu. And it refers to the people living around the river Indus. So geographically, I'm a Hindu. And the Hindu scholars, they say that this word Hindu, it is a misnomer. But the right word which should be used is a Sanatan Dharma, or a Vedic Dharma, or a Vedantist. Let's discuss the definition of Islam. Islam comes from the root word Salam, which means peace. It is also derived from the Arabic word silm, which means to submit your will to the will of God. Thus, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to the will of God. And this is mentioned in several ahadiths and verses of the glorious Quran. In Surah Ali Ibrahim, chapter number 3, verse number 19, and Surah Ali Ibrahim, chapter number 3, verse number 85. And a person who submits his will to the will of God, he is called as a Muslim. And this is also mentioned in several ahadiths and verses of the glorious Quran, including the verse of the glorious Quran from Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64. There is a misconception that Islam is a new religion and it came into existence 1400 years ago. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was the founder of this religion. But in fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God. As far as today's talk is concerned, I will not be discussing about those similarities that is known by the common people. For example, both the religions say that robbing is bad. Both the religions say that we should speak the truth. Both the religions say that we should not lie. Both the religions say that we should be kind. Both the religions say that we should not be cruel. I will only be talking about those similarities that is known by those people who are well versed with the scriptures, by the scholars. So let's discuss the similarities between Hinduism and Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 177. It is not righteousness that ye turn your faces towards the east or the west, but it is righteousness to believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the books and the messengers. It is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number one, book of Iman, chapter number two, hadith number six. A man approached our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he asked him, what is Iman? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Iman is to believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers 
and hereafter that is life after death, and qadr that is destiny. So iman basically consists of six pillars. Believing in Allah, believing in his angels, believing in his books, believing in his messengers, believing in hereafter, life after death, and believe in qadr that is destiny.